So in this video, I'm just going to talk about monoids uh, in sets. Uh, so there's a general notion for categories uh, that I'm not going to talk about in this video. And so uh, we're going to write things additively. Um, what I want to do is I just kind of want to like lay down some basic properties. Okay, so so let's M be uh, a, an additive monoid. So this is an M. So this is going to be a monoid. And to this monoid, I can do, there's a, a number of things I can do. So M, I can take M and I can map it to, uh, let's say the the uh, okay, let's do this. There, there's kind of uh, three operations I want to describe. Okay, uh, ones we all we know really well. So this is the groupification. Okay, uh, here, this is. This is plus minus. That's a superscript plus minus. So this is taking invertible elements or units, um, and then here we can take we can mod out by the uh, the invertible elements, and so this is we'll call this sharp things. And sometimes this is also called uh, uh, going to a characteristic monoid. Okay, so both of these things here. This starts out in the world of monoids here. Both of these are in groups here. So it ends up in the category of groups. This one here ends up in uh, sharp monoids. So sharp monoids are ones without any units in them. Um, Maybe I can circle this, okay? And then um, well, I, I want you to note that uh, if you saw the Frobenius like and Atoll like, up here, this is a Frobenius like, meaning that this is all about orderings, and this is a Atoll like down here. And note that if I take this, this thing, and I apply sharp, I'm just going to get to the trivial monoid. And if I if I take this one and I apply one of these two things, okay. So if I take the groupification, uh, then this could be something interesting, maybe. Okay. But if I apply this uh, this taking units functor, right, then this goes also to the trivial monoid because we've modded out by everything. Okay. So these are kind of three basic operations that I want to talk about. There's more. But these are the, the most fundamental ones. Okay. Um, that being said, I, I, can, I can talk about uh, some properties now. Okay. So let's talk about properties of monoids. So I'll give the pro name of the property here. So I'm just going to build a table. Um, and uh, let me... Make sure I have so, so I'm going to write it a little bit to the left here, uh, and then I'm just going to write them out here. So this will be uh, so this is going to be M is sharp. Okay, so here uh, when M is sharp, this the definition is that M this thing is trivial. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to write so an example here. And then I'm going to write a non-example here. Okay. So this is the natural numbers with addition. Uh, that's a. Uh, it's going to be sharp because uh, this thing has no units in it. Uh, a non-example is any group because all of them will be invertible. Okay. Uh, let me do another one. M is integral. Um, so this is saying that this map into the groupification is injective. Uh, another way of saying it is that it has a cancellation law. Uh, uh, so here's an example of the natural numbers. And then to get something that's non-integral, you have to think a little bit, but... Uh, but what you can do is, if you have the natural numbers, so start well, natural numbers are start one. So you could have two, three, four, etc. Okay. What you can do is you can add 
two copies of one. So you can call it one one and one two. And then here, we'll make sure that the addition just adds up to the normal thing. But this one will, will, will violate the, the cancellation law. All right. So let's do another one. Uh, saturated. When is a monoid saturated? Uh, okay, so the condition is that... Okay, so for all A in the group, the groupification... Okay, and I'm going to define, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, so there's this map here. Okay, sometimes it's not injective, but um, I'm just going to identify this anyway. So what it's going to say is that if n for any natural number, if n times a is in m under the, the, the inclusion here, maybe this is a bad notation because you should really take the image of m. But I, I'm just going to ignore that. That this is going to imply that A is actually an element of M. Okay. So that's what it means to be saturated. Um, okay. Uh, so what are, what are some examples? So uh, a saturated element is uh, something like N. Okay. And a non-saturated thing would be something like, and you have to think about this, 11 times N plus 23 times n. So the idea here is that these things are missing some low numbers, this is some low natural numbers, right? But then after you groupify this thing, uh, you're going to get everything. And uh, and I guess, you, you know, since you, you have it groupified and, and say, um, I don't know, two, like 50 times one of these small numbers is going to be, in this, because this contains all the large natural numbers, since these things are co-prime, um, then uh, th then you you have that, but you don't have that a is also in this thing for a a small number like five. Okay, so this gives a counterexample. Uh, uh, okay, so like here uh, we can com so these are these three basic ones. So these are the most basic. Okay this guy to this guy. And then uh, if we combine these things, we get something called divisorial. Uh, divisorial. Okay, so this is sharp uh, plus integral uh, plus saturated. Okay, and uh, an example of this would of course be the natural numbers. And a non-example was any one of these things. Okay, because these are not, this one's not saturated, this one's not integral, this one's not sharp, and, um, and we need it to be all three things for it to be divisorial. Okay, uh, so this is the, the kind of first batch of, of, of definitions. Um, I want to give one more, and in order to do that, uh, I'm going to, let me just kind of continue with this, this, this list of properties. We'll say that, um, okay, so another property. Uh, okay, so M is going to be called perfect if uh, for all natural numbers, the map uh, N from M to M uh, is uh, is by is a bijection. Okay, so an example would be, um, let's say the the rational numbers. Okay, under addition, and a non-example. would be the natural numbers, okay? Because multiplication by n is not surjective in that case. Okay, um, okay, so this is, this is perfect. Uh, so with this property, uh, 
uh, comes the operation of perfection. Of perfection, which I will describe. Okay, so to to build this up, I need to define a division category. So, uh, construct a division category. Okay, and I'm just going to draw what the category is. So the objects are labeled by the natural numbers. Okay, and we're going to have a morphism from one guy to another uh, if, it, if the, the one divides the other. So 2 divides 4, 2 divides 6, 3 divides 6, and so on and so forth. So we make this, this, this category. So let's call this category. So call this category uh, D. Okay, and then... Um, or let's say, um, I, well, I don't, I don't know. We'll call this actually division cat. And I, since I've been kind of circling things today, I'll just do. I'll just circle this. Okay. So then I'm going to uh, give you the perfection construction. Uh, so the perfection construction. Okay. So we're gonna make a diagram. So I, I didn't want to call it D because I'm going to have to use D now. And so this is the division cat. So this is a functor. So like all diagrams, uh, it's a functor from this category into the category that we want. Okay, and then we're going to take a limit of these things, or a co-limit actually. Okay, and so what, what it's going to do is it's going to take this I, and it's going to map it to I, I, and this is just going to be M. So this is some copy of M. All right, this is in here. And then uh, the, the, the transition maps, okay? So the transition maps are going to give, be given by multiplication uh, by, okay, so, so we have I, and so we only have a map when we have, uh, when the next number is divisible by I. So let's say it's I times J. And then this thing will be given by multiplication by j. Okay, so this is this is also another copy of m. Okay, so this is multiplication. So this is a bracket uh, j inside there. Okay, and so the definition is so given this whole setup, we have this diagram here. Okay, uh, the the perfection. So the definition. So if m is an additive monoid, then uh, uh, M perfection is going to be defined to be equal to uh, the co-limit of the diagram. Let's see. Uh, let's just call it D. Since I, I gave this functor name D, I'll just say co-limit of D. Okay, so this is the co-limit of the diagram. Okay, so this is a uh, co-limit is the same thing as inverse limit. Um, all right, so that t tells us what we have here. Um, so I wanted to hit some other properties um, just for the sake of, of having them on record. And let me... I have a piece of paper with them. All right.